So blood of the fork! Oh my gosh! Oh. And Hikaru throws his hand. He's, you know what that was? That was Hikaru Nakamura number 16, which is a dejected Hikaru Nakamura. But he also, he was like, look, I deserve to win that game. That was sloppy, but I'm taking it. That's what he, that's what that face said. And now, I don't know what he's saying there, but, oh my gosh, to the analysis board. What a blunder by Wesley So in the final seconds. And that's why you worry about Bullet against Nakamura. Bishop C5 blunders the fork, takes a drawn endgame to a win with one move. And I guess it doesn't even matter if we back up to the earlier moments because Hikaru Nakamura gets the win and we have a tied match. We do indeed. And that's huge for Hikaru's confidence because you know, he's upset with the way he's been playing. You can see it on his face, but he'll take the win. Especially yep. as we get closer and closer to the bullet time control. And Wesley, you know, he's not going into that segment without a huge fight in the remaining three minute plus one second increment games. Yep. Here with the black pieces, once again, looks totally fine for black. Wesley's really had not too many problems, it seems like, out of the opening stages. But on the flip side, Hikaru out of the opening has seemed quite fine himself. It's been later where the two have been making their errors. With the exception of that one knowing... game, Hikaru blundered. Yeah, Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, knowing Wesley's facial expressions as well, he's kind of looking off to the distance. I get the feeling he's a little having trouble forgetting that last loss. One of the things you and I talk so much about so that makes him great is, one, super precise. Two, he tends to be a player that doesn't tilt easily, right? He he does. He's not he's not so emotional, right? He And I think that that loss, though, is one that kind of stings a little bit, you know? Yeah, as much as we call him the stoic, you know, very humble player who is untiltable, you lose a game like that when yeah, you that's have no business losing, you you must be upset. So night of five All played. Right. You could take it. Should you take it? He should, maybe. Light squares. We're back to a structure we've talked a lot about. We're back to shouting out 14,000 plus on YouTube. We almost had 15,000 there. Record viewership for the YouTube chess channel. Hit the subscribe button. We do appreciate you being here. And of course, on Twitch, more than 30,000 of you with us for what I think is going to be an epically, epically close match here. For sure. And, and we actually had a great question in the chat about why did Wesley so resign there? He was losing in that last game, and he wants to conserve time because he wants to play yep. as many games in this time control as possible. So great question. Here in, in comes the knight to f4. You do not want to take that on f4 now because once the pawn takes back on f4, you're opening up attack on the e4 pawn. The g3 knight would have been under attack, and that's why yep. Hikar stopped one square short and put his bishop on e3. I'm also going to shout out gold member BRTL 1000s. He's right. There is, because of the fair play Zoom call, we have multiple cameras. The Zoom call where we have the players captured and sort of built into our broadcast is on a slight delay, roughly about a second and a half, almost two seconds. There are times in the scramble where you see a move being made on the board instantly with their hands up here, and that's exactly why. So there is actually a micro delay there. No tomfoolery going on. The video is live, not pre-recorded. Um, and, uh, which is why I have to watch my mouth because they can't edit out things that I say it's live. <laughs> All right. Uh, takes, takes, looks... shake and bake to F5. Bring it. You shake and bake to F5. Black will eventually shake and bake right back to F4 and put a rook on D8 first. So that's why you can put a rook on D8 anyway. And we're looking in pretty similar position, right? A symmetrical pawn structure, no clear targets to gang up on yet. Maybe you start with g6 just to keep the white knight out of f5, but I'm not yeah. sure that amounts to anything in the long term. g6 is hard because it also weakens the king side, right? But without the bishops on the board, I think you can be a lot more flexible with these pawns and, and not worry so much. b5, interesting. Okay. Now, I expect knight to f4 just to follow suit, but... You know what's funny B4. about this position, Robert? is if you had this exact same position, but with the colors reversed, like put white's queen on c4, right? White's knight, like that's a totally reasonable position for this line, right? You could have this exact position, but put all of white's pieces where black's pieces are, just, and, just, and just flip the script. And then that would be really good for white because of how committal some black's choice had been. But right now, right. I think you know, Wesley decides that it was the time to take on c3 because if the pawn recaptures here, which I think it should, that pawn is pinned. So maybe there's some knight d4 tactics yeah. available to black. 
Yeah, let's show that on the analysis board. If BC3, you might see so pop a pony directly into D4. And if trades continue, black is eventually going to bring white real problems over here on the queen side. So, so actually, after B takes C3, in fact, we are we are seeing what we've analyzed happen on the board. Hikaru immediately responds with C4, but this transition has got to favor black. That's a that's a pass pawn, soon to be maybe a protected pass pawn. And these pawns are split and targetable. So, so looks like he got the better of that Berlin, Rui Lopez, Italian structure maneuver fest. <laughs> I that love is the, way the you scientific it. term. <laughs> and E5, that pushes white's pawn further away from his other pieces that could be overextended. And D3 played by Wesley, just getting a tempo on the queen. And what's he going to do here? Knight D7 comes to mind. Just yeah, allow Knight white D to take you on D4. Oh, wow. Takes on D3 and gets away with it. Hmm. It feels like so many of pieces are kind of attacking each other, hanging to D5 knight to D2 knight, both under attack. <laughs> Wasn't expecting all that. No, <laughs> I turned away for a half second. I'm like, what? Everybody gets traded, but you did kind of call it. With only a few seconds on the on the uh, game clock, I, I expect this one to finish in a draw. The double pawns are not enough to write home about, and uh, this should eventually just be a half point for each player, <sighs> which keeps us dead locked right here. Got to go. You got to go fast um, for sure, but there isn't really enough on the board to really worry about. But Wesley's going to try to repeat here, everyone, and just get to the next game. He knows his advantage against Hikaru. If anywhere, has to be in blitz. It's got to be in these segments. So, um, so he's just going to create a position where he can repeat moves. But is not going to allow that, Danny. He's going to put his rook on A8, then on A7, then on A1, then on A2. He is going to play this yep. for as much time as he can to get closer and closer to the bullet section. We get down to less than 30 minutes officially here in the 3-1 segment. This is our first speed chess semifinal. Let's not forget that Magnus Carlsen takes on Maxime bache Legrave on Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific. That's December 11th. We'll, uh, we'll show you that with an image at some point coming up in the show and make sure that it burns into your brain that regardless of who wins this, Magnus and MBL play on Friday. Um... Hikaru doing what he can to just keep messes here. Every time you move a pawn, you eliminate the idea of a threefold repetition or a 50 move draw. Wait. Could be in not trouble, but he's on the worst side of this. Yeah, this I was going to say that he definitely created winning chances for Wesley in that process, but from a we'll call this the SCC gambit, Robert. <laughs> this is the I'm going to let you win for another 2 minutes only to get a draw you could have had anyway and take 2 minutes off the clock. Um, remember that the winner of the semifinals plays in the speech chess championship final presented by Anjuno on Saturday, December 12th. So make sure you mark your calendars for the next several days here on chess.com TV. Uh, you could even play Rook F3 there, not Rook G3, but you could have played Rook F3 and it still would have been a draw. Look at the car. He went King to F2, the King to E2. He's just trying yep. to keep this game going for a little bit longer with a little bit more time. And Wesley is just going to repeat. 